I started. Um, Did that put that on record? I don't have it on record. Go. That's it. I'm Bonnie Swart, and I've been working with Pastel since I was little. And I think I inherited my mother's broken up set of hard pastels and used them on my dad's typing paper. And they were pretty messy. And I was really glad when I was able to get into something uh, easier or less messy. But really, that took until I was an adult. So I mean, I'm very familiar with pastels and some of the problems with them. And. Uh, and trying, and of course, and I, I worked in oil paint for years, and I had a lot of uh, portrait commissions to do in pastel, and I, I found it so frustrating to say, okay, even if you have a set of 500, I don't care how many you have, you still might not have quite the right value, and you still have something you want to get between uh, one shade and the next, you can't quite get there. And uh, I know the classic way to do it is you kind of layer it and, and build it up that way. But I, maybe because I don't know how many of you use pastels or have ever used them. Have you found that you need a piece of sandpaper to sharpen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I'm just so cheap that I started seeing all this pigment going on to the sandpaper, and I just put two and two together and thought, well, heck, let's see now. And, and you can actually make yourself a palette with all the dip piles of pigment. Just grind up more of it, and then you can blend them together. <coughs> it's so nice. You can get just what you want. And like an oil painting or watercolor, you might put a little bit of a compliment in, you know, and you just, mm -hmm. when you get started, you start doing things more or less instinctively, you're not trying <laughs> to think it through step by step, you just do it, and this frees you up that way. So, the only problem is, of course, you, you've got to have a surface that will take, will take the uh, pigment, and this classic Canson paper won't, you just have to go the old-fashioned way like to dig off on Canson paper. But on velour paper, um, it holds the, the pigment for you. And then I found something I like even better, um, suede matte board. So I've done a number of things on suede matte board. Which is available where? <coughs> ben Franklin. Yay! Which is now called Price. <laughs> I don't know which one is. These are suede mat board, and this is the, um, these two, <laughs> and that's suede mat board, and those are also, they're mostly suede mat board because the velour paper doesn't have the strength, you know, it has to be taped up, and over on that wall, those are all suede mat board. <coughs> so, it's, it's so handy, you don't have to worry about, uh, the sheet tearing, and you don't have, you don't even have to have <coughs> backing, you know. So you just work on it. Does it come in the different colors? Cool. Comes in a lot of different colors, and um, <coughs> let's see. I, well, like that reddish background <coughs> those chicks are on. I, I thought, what in the world can you do with that? So I just thought, I'd but. It, it, it was fine for the chicks, and, but, but certain things do best on tan or gray. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I have a dark, a dark tone here that I thought maybe would be nice for this light mare, and it's the same subject as this one over here. And this is a print from an oil painting that I don't have anymore. Mm -hmm. And she was a wonderful old mare. Yeah. And that was her last fold. And I called her the Dowager. Mm -hmm. And I took a whole two rolls of film of her. And she just was had such an expressive face. 
But the thing about her that impressed me the most was how devoted she was to her foal. And she had this big, strapping stud colt who was just full of himself. <laughs> he just thought he was hot. <laughs> and he didn't need any help from her at all. But she was so solicitous and so concerned about him. And here she was kind of a broken down, I shouldn't say that, but she, she was. She, her ribs were showing. Show the camera. And the, this isn't a good example of it, but the other horses in, at this place, well, they were all well fed and cared for, but she was just at the end of her life, I'm afraid. But that devotion she had was just <laughs> so I like to do her. Now I don't, I think I will start. <coughs> So, in, in doing and working this way, I use flat watercolor brushes. Let's see, I've got, I, once in a while you can use a small brown. But watercolor brushes do really well, and I like to start too big, you know, with a brush bigger than you think you'll need. And just but you can see that the uh, surface picks up the color really well. Can you get closer, Chuck, with your camera or zoom in? Ah, oh, excellent. Brilliant. It seems to flow very nicely. Yeah, the surface and then a nice brush. Mm -hmm. But as well as the watercolor brushes, I bring a couple of stiff ones, like. This acrylic, I had left over from acrylic paint, because it, you can lift a little, not much, but a little, and blend. And then, of course, if you have a really disastrous, <coughs> put it where you don't want it. I shouldn't do it towards <coughs> the Right. Compressed air helps. It's just air. So, let's see. Get some I use that really yeah. <laughs> Maybe even closer. Should I <coughs> move? You're good. No. You're fine. You just do your camera. <coughs> now this brush is big and a little clumsy, but if, if, frankly, if I didn't use a big brush, we'd be here all night. That's okay. <laughs> 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 now, now, I don't know if it shows over there or here. Yeah, it shows. Boy, that television really should. See how the mirror's speckled? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's called... Well, Appaloosa? No. Rony? Close. Apple. Dapple. 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 There's a very nasty word for it. Big word, little word. <laughs> Can you think of it? what it's called? <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Oh, this brain. Anyway, uh, there's a word, very uncomplimentary sounding word for it. But <laughs> some wonderful horses have that coloring. And it's, it's, you don't mean piebald. No. no. <laughs> that's a that's a memorable word. <laughs> piebald and skewball, right? I've never heard of skewball. Skewball. Skewball was a word story. Yeah. You know that song. Oh God! Never drink. Yeah. Never drink wine. <laughs> I love that. Always drink wine. <laughs> um, no, I think there is such a thing, but maybe it's just in England somewhere else. I haven't heard it much. Well, tell about your rice. Oh, well, when you're handling pastels a lot, if you put them in a bowl of rice, that, that keeps them fairly clean. Uh, you pretty much have to have them peeled in order to work them. And 
find that once they're peeled, if they're just all thrown in together, they all start to pick up each other's color, and so the rice prevents that. Does um, the rice absorb any moisture that could be in the air? I don't know. And we are in such a humid climate, you'd think that might be the case. Well, they start getting mushy. <laughs> but they, they never have, to my knowledge, no matter where we go. Uh, I really like being able to use several different shades. Just out of frustration, because <laughs> I've spent so much time doing pastels, I guess. But I'm not for giving up the old classic way of, of doing it either. It's just this is more like painting, <coughs> this is more like drawing. So it depends on what mood you're in. Mm -hmm. You can get a nice line with a nice sharp edge brush. This one isn't that sharp. But it's much, you know, if you really want to draw and do lines, I <coughs> recommend the other way. Do you ever use both techniques in the same piece, both drawing and blending with the brush? Well, <coughs> not exactly. For instance, these pencils here are for drawing, <coughs> but they won't work at all on this surface. Mm -hmm. Pastel pencils, mm -hmm. and it says soft on there. They're, they won't make a line there. Mm -hmm. But I do combine, like, which I could do right now, is take, take a stick and just, this is the way. Can you, you zoom in, Jeff? Flea bitten gray. That's the word. Flea bitten. Awful. Yeah, I know. I, I just think that. <laughs> I'm sorry, what is it? Flea bitten. Flea bitten. Yeah, I, that one. <laughs> I just couldn't think of it. I don't like it. But that's what it is. And some of the best horses just might be flea bitten gray. <laughs> So what you're doing is pressing re relatively hard with this, is that correct? No, actually, I'm just stroking it. Oh. Um, but this is where uh, using the brush will come in. But anyway, if you have a lot of area to cover, you can start out this way and then go to the brush. Um, so probably some of you have already seen this before, but when I first discovered this method or stumbled on it, I took pictures a step by step of, of starting from the beginning here with the sticks, drawing, well actually, the whole idea was to do every step of it with a brush. And I just thought, is it possible to do a painting, the whole darn thing, with a brush? So I, did, I took step-by-step -step pictures, and then I realized, yeah, I guess you could just brush in a background. And so, um, and the final <coughs> piece is in here somewhere, and that's done with a brush. Wow. Oh, wow. A little bit like Beretta's dog, but not the same. And this is probably not <coughs> with a brush. And this is before I discovered the method. Where is that picture? Anyway. And then I've got watercolor in the first half. That's with a brush. <coughs> <coughs> so <coughs> you can, you know, just dab in an abstract type background. And there are some lines you can see. They're mostly done with the brush. But some some of these lines could be done with a real soft
one like this. And uh, Brand. this is Are they very Schminky. <laughs> is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> S-C-H-M-I-N-C-K-E. Schminky. Right. I did not bring the French sounding pastels with me because I cannot pronounce them. <laughs> 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 yeah, right. I always, I, I don't know how to do that. But anyway, and then I order supplies from Daniel Smith. And once in a while, they'll send me this marigold and it's called Artworks. It's incredible. Mm. Here. Is it incredible, the color texture or everything? It, well, it's it's great if you can do it on something dark, and it, but I mean it, it makes a really bright. So for highlights, see I'm trying to get, I used it on the edge of that cap over there, but um, I don't use it for the main body of the painting. I use the uh, good old. And why is that? It's like trying to eat a dinner that's all whipped cream. <laughs> it's, um, you just, and you know how you paint fat over thin and oil? And if you start fat, and then you, you can't keep getting fatter, because you're already there. In other words, it's just oversaturated with oil, maybe. And these, I don't know what they're made of. I don't know if they have oil in them, why they're so soft, but I don't know. I better get so, on with So, so Bonnie, fat to thin, you've smeared that oh. underpainting in pretty good then? That's, that's smeared into the other. Uh, well, the there's there some pigment chairs? there, but I think I should, I should uh, put a little shadow on it because I have another one with me I was going to work on. And I haven't. One problem is I don't spend enough time preparing the palettes. Chuck, el eliminate the bottom half and see if you can get in even closer. Probably crank it too. Good. I just got here and I've never worked with pastels and I really would like to. So, okay, if we ask you a ask you a question. Sure. Uh, are, you, are you using brush with paint or pastels? Right? We, they, this is all pastel pigment, and oh, it's, it's I just pigment. grind it out on sandpaper so that I can dip into it with a watercolor brush. I see. And uh, you get the fun of blending, which I like. <coughs> and I want to finish this, but at the same time, let's see what time it is. I have another one. I'll go back and forth. This is a cat. One of these cats that's been dumped, and I guess you call him Feral. And he's a real sweetheart. He hangs around our place. So I got some pictures of him. We can hear the back row and talk loud enough so we can all hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one where I have a whole lot more territory I need to cover. So I can start. See, that had gray on it, but I could just wipe it out of the brush. And this is my subject. Can somebody tell me what you call this? Feral cat. cat. No. <laughs> what I mean, color -wise. Oh, orange. As, as in tabby. Tabby orange. Is that an orange, orange tabby? Yeah. Okay. We bit. <laughs> I think I think that's correct, actually. <laughs> I'm sorry, the surface here is this this is well done. Suede <laughs> meant for leather? No. Suede. It's, suede it's leather. meant to be like suede leather. Oh. But it's not oh, really it's leather. Oh, suede. So no animals oh, have to die for this. <laughs> it sure looks like suede. Does it suede? You all are paying attention, you're telling her. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of um, thank you. <laughs> most most of these are on suede mat board. These are on velour paper. Now velour paper is a lot cheaper. Suede mat board 
does, you know, it runs into money. So it's you just, $30 a sheet, is it not? Been right yeah, now? but there's a big sheet. 30. So like these little, two, this size is $2. Do you buy them in that size or do you cut them I, um, I go in and ask them for small pieces and they let me. The reason you're getting them so cheaply is that he really does let you have a bargain when it's just the inside of a huge thing that he's added for someone else. Oh, that's cool. So with this big brush, you can cover a lot of territory pretty fast. Just How do you get the, the pigment out of your brush for the next one? You just sure you kind of wipe it on the towel. I keep a... And I keep also a number of brushes. So if I have a color that's extremely dark, I don't want to um, yeah, mess up my color. So I just go to another brush. Okay. But right now, I'm just trying to get the, the main area in. Did you sketch your subject in first body? Yes. Okay. Couldn't see it from back here. My sketching ability <coughs> is not that great at home, but in front of an audience. I wouldn't try any sketching. <laughs> do, you use, do you use pastel to sketch or pencil? Or? I use pastel. Pastel to sketch. Yeah. In fact, you wouldn't be able to use pencil on this. Now, if you're going to put a background in it like you have with your horse, do you put the background in first and work from there? It just depends on how you feel. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, generally, you... I'm more excited about the subject than the background, but uh -huh. really the, the real artist should think the whole. In mm -hmm. fact, it's really good to have an idea of what it's going to, you know, background's going to be. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they just work together, you work in background. And, yeah, I've never tried this, it might be really interesting to try. Yeah, it does. Yeah, but one problem with this subject is he doesn't have a lot of variety in color. But it was the picture was taken around sunset, and uh, the color is subtle, but it, it is really lovely. Does somebody feed him? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 him and three or four others that just sort of hang around. They got it's your pretty number. healthy looking. I'm sure somebody fed it. Yeah. Well, the most important thing is somebody has had him, what, spayed or neutered? Good. That's good. Fixed. Yeah. Hold that up so everybody can see where you are at this point. Hmm? Would you hold that up so we oh. can I don't know if anything mm -hmm. much shows. Oh, yes, can you uh, hold it to the camera? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Might have used a compressed air as an eraser of sorts? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it is not an exact science. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, for instance, sometimes you have some awful thing sticking out here. I'm looking for a couple of spare pictures. If you want to... The parts that you don't want erased, you got to cover. Mm -hmm. That's why she gets the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So who's collecting money from you, honey? You want to know? <laughs> <laughs> Greta, I want to know what you're going to do with Della. Yeah. Reserve in case someone like Bonnie says no. Now she knows. Now you tell her. <laughs> <laughs> you 
just blew any more heads. No. Yeah. You, you really impressed me, though, with the week that you, you were experiencing. And now it's all over, right? And you can take a deep breath. I was working on a, a deadline, and it, I let it show in my voice. I was quivering, practically in tears. I had a big deadline for another job. It's so nice so, to know we have the best. Mm -hmm. it work. So I owed it to you, but yeah, I you, you know that. <laughs> you must. Uh, I don't sleep well at night. I <laughs> strong arm someone into it. Oh. <laughs> oh. I bet you do too. <laughs> She'll sell your bridge next. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Goretta, it's it's worth your sleepless nights. <laughs> yes, good. I just realized that was quite an insult. I said, well, "What the price of mission? There is no price for you." <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean the that. Was <laughs> <laughs> that one commercial. Some things are priceless. Uh, there you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. Good slip. Good job. Good, 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 good recovery. Yeah. Good recovery, right? Well, you can see this. You know, this is where it gets kind of draggy, but I'll concentrate on the head because that's where so much of the expression is. And now I have to stop and get some the right pigments here. Does it matter much what the brushes are? Yes. You need flat watercolor brushes that will hold a nice edge because synthetic yeah. Uh, I don't see any point in using a saber brush for this. But you can make lines <coughs> with a brush. Bonnie, do you find it that they might wear out using the sandpaper? No, I guess because I don't scrub them into the sandpaper. I just try to pick up the pigment. Good question. But you remind me of when I was at a workshop uh, with Donald Putman, who's a, just a wonderful painter. He's one of these naturals. It's like Greta, because wherever he is, he's always painting the model. He just sits there, his, all his stuff's right there, and he paints this beautiful picture of this model. And he just thrives on it. He doesn't care if people are walking by or everybody's hanging over his head. His shoulder doesn't bother him. Somebody said, um, isn't that hard on your brush? And he said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> In other words. Yeah. <laughs> are, are you using mostly soft pastels on everything? Yes. Soft I, but that's a good question because that's another thing. You can take a hard pastel and grind it here and use it just as well as the soft. And I know I still had a lot of my pastels were too hard for this. And it's no problem once it's ground up. It up. Yeah. What uh, grit sandpaper do you use? 30 I just get a package and. It's not real fine. Not the super extreme either way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you ever use oil pastels? No. Um, Is there a particular reason you, you started with this? or? What's the advantage of one or the other? Oil? Hmm. I, I don't know. Loretta, do you know? I just kind of avoid oil pastel. I've tried it, and uh, number one, I found the color didn't hold up, but I think they have probably a lot better quality. I know a lot of people like them. They give you a different look. If you use, if you ever work with pastel on sandpaper, because that's one of the grounds that you can use for pastel. Mm -hmm. It gives you this brilliant, almost glittery look of an oil pastel. I just don't it's like it. Brush would pick it up the same as the chalk. Oh, you can use a brush with oil pastel. Yeah. <laughs> one of the things is when you've made a couple of strokes with oil pastel, that's it. You, you can't keep stroking. It just, it's yeah. very limiting. Not like a brush? Sort of like, well, I, in my experience, when I first started 
painting in acrylics. After 10 years of oil painting, mm -hmm. it drove me crazy. Yeah. And I guess a lot of you have painted in acrylics. But um, you, there's, no, there's no sensual working that's pigment around. It's there, you know. And, and you just have to, your whole approach has to change. Bonnie? I've worked with oil pastels for illustrations, like when you're trying to make a, a poster mm -hmm. for Brilliant. somebody to, uh, to announce something. Mm -hmm. That's as fun at that point. Yeah. But they don't last very long because they do smear, of course. Yeah. But uh, it is, it's good but for it, something it really bold and shocking. Yeah. yeah. Right. And they have to be on a particular kind of paper then? Or? Probably no. not. Uh -uh. Crayons. You said, Lynn, yeah. That's the effect. And I, I've done crayons. Don't <laughs> 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 no, you use a fixative when you're done? No. I don't use fixative, except maybe on rare occasions, because it does tend to dull, dull the colors a bit, and it kind of cuts out your whites. But I've done paintings and sent them across the country, and, for instance, this one's been back and forth from the East Coast. Wow. And no problem, no dusting down here on the, on the liner. Good. So. Because um, you fixed it or, or you didn't fix it? I didn't. Um, it's not that, I, I don't have a strong opinion, you know. I think if you want to fix it, fix it. But you might have to go back and put some, fix it afterward with some more pigment, some more white at least. Um, Good point. Oh, this method, if you're painting the pastel on with a brush, one thing you want to be sure to do is seal it in like this. Oh, oh look what I did. I messed it up. <laughs> I had a little bit of black there. So... Anyway, what is it when you're <laughs> polishing stones or something? It's called burnishing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think there's something that was so manly. <laughs> oh, well. I'll be able to cover it up. Anyway, you press in like this on the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I haven't done it on the whole picture. But you see, it, it's holding. I haven't even... So that's one reason I like this surface. Do you no. usually do that as you go along before putting it in or once? I usually just try to remember to do it before I take it to the framer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. I, I guess was reading Robert Penrose this week. And oh, good. He made a comment in there about uh, never fixing pastels. Really? He said a oh, long darn. term at Rome. Oh. That's a thing. In fact, I just took the paper out and I first where I copied that down. Oh, he so does. See, that was early 1900. <coughs> mm -hmm. And since then, you know, we've always thought, oh, you have to fix it, you have to fix it. So I don't know if the fixative has improved or... It probably um, has. And I, I, I don't know. I just thought it was interesting and, you know, that uh, our teacher would say that. And it, he was... He was not too shy with his opinions, was he? No, he was a perfect teacher. Yeah. Do, do you? We lived in a house that his father owned. Really? Yeah. Oh, in where? Cozad. That was his real name. Nebraska. Cozad, oh. Nebraska, on the Hundred Meridian. Oh, he His gone. father was a developer. <laughs> Robert Penry's father? Well, it, do you want to hear the story? Sure. Well, it should be on my time, not on your time. <laughs> No, his father was a developer, and he went along the railroad when it moved west and purchased land, and then he'd send these posters back to the east coast and uh, wanted people to move out there. And he established his coast at Nebraska on the 100th Meridian. And he settled with his two boys, and Robert was, I believe, the younger one. And then he had a fight with Mr. Peterson, who owned the hardware store, and that happens to still be there yet. And he thought he'd killed Mr. Peterson. So in the middle of the night, he picked up his two boys and his wife, and he headed east and bought part of the boardwalk in New Jersey. Oh and God. he told everybody his boys were adopted, 
And the youngest boy, he started calling Robert Henry. And huh. from there, um, Robert, you know, developed his art talent and then became, became one of the, was the Philadelphia Nine or whatever it was, one of the first great art teachers in America. Yeah. Anyway, Mr. Peterson didn't die. <laughs> 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 then he went what to what medium did he work in? Yeah. Pardon? Did, what medium did he work in? Uh, primarily oil, but I think he worked in everything. Okay. According to his book, he, he did some of everything. Uh, is he that the Art of Spirit? Spirit? Yes. The book, The Art yes. of Spirit? The Art of Spirit. That's a priceless book. I haven't read it all, obviously, because I hadn't read that part. Are you laying down one color and then putting another layer over the top of that color? Are you um, layering? Sometimes, but, but actually you can blend instead of layering. Blend it on your, your um, sandpaper, you mean? What you mean? Well, you can well, blend too. on the sandpaper, and I guess I am layering. It's just kind of unconscious. <laughs> Bonnie, mm. on the colors that you use, when you're when you're looking at a photograph or a real live animal, do you see those colors, or is it your choice to to create a color that you're looking for? Well, of course. It depends if you're doing a portrait commission, commission for someone, you've got to be totally literal. But otherwise, you shouldn't hold yourself. You should let your imagination create. Yeah, be creative. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm not being very creative here, but sometimes the creativity sneaks in, yeah. you know, without your even trying. It just comes out. And some really genius artist can <coughs> say, see the picture and develop a lot of changes and so forth in their mind and say, mm -hmm. I'll do it like so and so. Mm -hmm. But you have to be so good. And especially with lighting, or if you're trying to work from two or three different pictures and the lighting isn't quite the same, from, you know, it can get, oh, it's, it's mm -hmm. too much for me. <laughs> <laughs> It's just wonderful to have one good picture, but at the same time, some of the best things are done from a faulty photograph. If the photograph is too perfect, uh, honey, I think that's what my problem is with the commission I'm trying to do at home. The photograph is perfect. All they're going to get is a larger attempt to copy the photograph. It's a quadruple portrait, and it's killing me. <laughs> it's in, it's in watercolor, and which is hard enough. Yeah, <laughs> I'm having an awful time. But anyway, remember I did the lamb auction. We went to the fair one year, and the little children with their big lambs, and their chin under the, in their hand, and it was so heartbreaking. You know, some of the children felt so bad, and all, oh, and. The photograph I took indoors, and I didn't have a flash or anything, so it was not a good photograph, and it's one of the best watercolors I've ever done. Do you still have it? I oh, know. <laughs> it's, it's gone. There's actually, there's a picture of it in one of those. But it's, it forces you to put your own creativity in. And if you're lucky, <laughs> it works. Of course, if it's a bad photograph and it doesn't come out right, then you've got somebody to blame. <laughs> Are you doing whiskers with the brush? Uh, not yet. I'm going to use a smaller brush. I'm just when I look at, at pastels, I'm, I really am eager to learn how to do them. And, well, uh, and I, I think are these. Are these pastels all using really sharply sharpened pencils? How do they get the eye, the shine in the eye? And the, that's that's how the sandpaper got into it. You know, you've got to take it and oh. and get a sharp point on there, and then use it directly without a brush. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically it's all direct. The brush is just added a, an aid that I use. 
And the only reason I, I'm not going to do this ever again, okay? <laughs> We've all seen enough of me and these brushing. Bonnie things. is under the mistaken impression that you can see Michelangelo, watch him for an hour, and then you never invite him back because you've learned it all. Do we think that's true? That we've no. seen all, we've learned all we can learn from Bonnie in this little hour. I'm never tired of watching her. I feel the same. But is she over the top or what? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> the only problem is that seeing you do this requires a follow-up workshop. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Levi. Okay. You can later. See, they're all learning how to do this. Oh, it's wonderful. We have a whole bunch of well, fossilizers. I went to a tour of the trade show in uh, um, Los Angeles a long time ago, and they gave away uh, boxes of pastel, small boxes, and one of them was just for skin tones. And I also yeah. got one that was really, really soft. I think it might be a Rembrandt. Is that a really it's soft one? Is there, is, there, is there a preference for soft ones or hard ones? Or well, do you use different ones for different uh, subjects? Or does anybody know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like soft ones. for working on this service. But if you're working on Canson paper like this, um, or like this, you don't need that much softness. Well, and Greta is a master pastelist. She can answer all these questions. And Are you giving me a lecture? No, seriously. I'm in her workshop. <laughs> and there she is one. Um, I'd like to say something for your information. There is a company um, based, I believe, in Seattle, but they have a couple of other locations too. Um, it's called Dakota, and it is strictly pastels. Mm -hmm. And they put out a brochure that will give you so much information on all the brands, all the textures, that, and the, the softer hard, and on and on and on. And it's fantastic. Just Dakota Pastel again? Dakota something or other pastels, but uh, it, it wouldn't be hard to get the name. I didn't know. I sh yeah, I should have brought a uh, one of their brochures. Yeah. I got, this is where I got these. Where Somebody you, fabulous uh, used these. Yeah, where did you get those? I that think wasn't that pastel person that you get the showed up in Brookings. I don't know anything about oh, that, okay. but I think I sent to Dakota to get these. And they're also excellent prices compared to others. <laughs> I thought they were terribly expensive. Bonnie? Yes? Uh, I can see very little that you do that, that needs any improvement whatsoever, but do you ever get to the point when you're doing something that you say, it's no good, I have to start all over again? Oh, yes. <laughs> Especially in watercolor. Mm -hmm. I wasn't looking at what I put on there. It's totally the wrong Whoops. value. So let's see how much of that get off. Zoom in. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. It's gone. You you want to sorry. Turn all over. Can you blow that all up? <laughs> Can Can you you know? that joke? It might take the whole pan and only be half off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. No. It would be maybe easier to fix your mistake. Rather than, like, rather than watercolor. With this method, I, I'm, I'm looking for some way to illustrate. I'll just be real bold here and say, so you can you can say, oh, I don't want him to be that color anymore. Oh, that looks good. And it's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing what you can oh my cover up. And there's a little layering involved there. But then there's, I don't like that. So yeah. if I take a stiff brush. You could be creative with that color. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. In fact, it's really in, in a case where you really should be creative. 
because uh, we've got no contrast here. So what's this dip brush doing? Oh, it, it kind of blends it and picks up some of the pigment so that you can blow it off. See? Now it's hardly there. Mm -hmm. And if I had brought a large oil painting brush, I could get more of it off. So, in other words, this is kind of a sissy thing because you can kind of undo, you know? It's not like watercolor. <laughs> Did, did the burnishing that you did before with your hand, did that help like preserve the original yeah. image? I, Whereas you didn't burnish the lavender. You're right. That would help get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the burnishing uh, helps seal it in there, but you can still cover it up. <coughs> so you can paint. Let's see. I'll see if I can cover up this lavender. When, when you're burnishing uh, with the side of your hand, mm -hmm. and you're going from maybe a dark brown to a, I have an Irish eyes, brown, dark brown to a white. You have to wipe, wipe your hand off between each white. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That kind of thing is, is, is kind of common sense applies. There's nothing <laughs> deeper <laughs> or mysterious. Price is <laughs> mission. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the grinding, there's a lot less of the uh, lavender showing. So you can paint over it. And, uh, Bonnie, do you prefer to do the standing up or sitting? I have to stand up so I get the right distance for my eyes and my glasses. And do you do that with watercolor too? I should. <laughs> <laughs> the larger the format, the more important it is to stand up. Yeah. And when you're down to little details, then I sit down. I heard you say earlier that you use a drawing table. Is that like a drafting table that's not slanted? Yeah. Do you find that um, mm -hmm. you're using the sticks as opposed to grinding on your sandpaper that it doesn't need, the sticks probably couldn't need quite as much as the burnishing? Or is it really the same? Because I it think it's about the same, uh, in, unless the brush puts it in even deeper. Mm -hmm. You that? would never burnish cans on, though. No, do you? absolutely not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's like you should try to restrain oneself from, what do you call it, smearing? Mm -hmm. And I see, I did, you can see places where I did smear. But you you lose all the crispness and all the freshness if you overdo it. So you just have to really try to be restrained. So it's just, it's a different ball game. We're going to have to pay her for this. This is good information. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad if I can give you some good information. I think you're just trying to make it. You know, no, it's true. <laughs> is that just wax paper? Um, this this is, between is a special kind of paper. Okay. I can think of what you call it. It's parchment paper? Okay. You know, no. This is not vellum, is it? Is it no. glassine? Yes. Thank you, Lady. What is this? Glassine paper. Now, if you made this, over top of a sharp image and burnished, you wouldn't pick up your colors, correct? Right. In fact, I've done that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, good. Yeah, it's... Uh, uh, that would keep it from smearing, but it would still yeah, give you it, that compact. Yeah, it keeps it from smearing, and it really protects a pastel that isn't protected, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. It needs to be taken to the framer or something like that. <laughs> That's considered, I think it's considered the best way to do it. I didn't I, hear the question. The space between the mat and the glass. So when, if anything does fall down, especially if a painting is tipped that way, it would not hit the mat, the, what do you call it? Yeah. Bevel. Um, I don't think it's necessary myself. What do you think? Well, the double mat board, you have some distance already. Yeah. It'll fall. It'll hit the bevel there. Mm -hmm. And I if, 
You do? And what is she do? She put a space in there. Between the picture and the mat. Oh, between your picture and your mat? Right. So behind that. And Lynn is an expert pastelist, so she's a good person to uh, pick her brain. And it's so nice if she'd give a demo to them. Is there any, depending on the uh, paper that you're using, is there no spray that you could cover it with to fix it so there's no dust coming off of it at all? Is there like you a spray? Could use, you can use a fixative spray. And, and I don't do it anymore, but there are, there are some pigments that come off worse than others. And as far as I know, the worst is black. Mm -hmm. And I did years ago do a painting of the black stallion and a little kid up on his back. And remember, somebody came running in the back door, hit it, knocked it face <laughs> down. Oh. 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 I had sprayed that one. I did that save it? it? Yep. <gasps> <laughs> it's amazing because I had framers ruined. You know, mm -hmm. in the early days. That's what I would be afraid of: is all this work, and then uh, somebody framing it, or 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 any or smudges. spraying it even. Yeah. Well, they, oh they, yeah. They would not. Because it seems spray. to me that the suede, if if if, if there was, a, you had to be really careful because of the the colors of the suede, or the, you know, because it's it's a beautiful background on that suede. It gives like the horse here. You know, it gives such a great background it's a nice color. Background. Yeah. You, you don't even have to have anything else but that. Yeah. Color. But I would be afraid too. Is about you anything in the spray? Shade. Could it hurt? You know, damage the. Yeah, I hadn't even she thought said of that. She doesn't spray it. No, I mean, if you were to spray. Yeah. Well, it. In other words, it is effective. I don't know how it works on matte board, mm -hmm. but you could take a little piece and experiment with it. And um, I brought something else up that I, I was going to say something about. I can't remember. What was the result of the catastrophe with the black stallion? It wasn't it a wasn't catastrophe a because I sprayed it. the heck out of it. The problem is it didn't have a real pastel look to it. You know, it was just, it made it look like oil pastels. Once you spray it, you mean? Well, it was the colors. You remember that if you saw the movie, you get the beautiful black horse, but then you get the kid with the gold and purple thing and a ridiculous yeah. hat that he was yeah. wearing and yeah so anyway <laughs> i don't like to do an all black subject in uh, pastel and i know you work lots of other colors in yeah. <laughs> cattle are a wonderful subject because you can take a little artistic license with Oh, now you tell us. I yeah. thought it was fantastic how you do them. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I love them. Yeah, they're, they're wow. Do you have a Cattle. favorite Cattle. brand? Cattle. 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 A favorite brand of pastel? Well, I use Rembrandt's kind of for the main ones. And I really like this Gerald. I don't know French. But and these are just some browns. I don't have a whole set of Geralds. Do you, Lee? Not a whole set. No, I have the portrait set. Oh, yeah. And they're they're good. Yeah. One problem, and I hate to say it, but with, with Rembrandt's, is you're working away very sincerely trying to stroke some uh, pigment on and you hit a piece of sand. Oh, yeah. Grit. Yeah, grit. And you really got to the blues. Oh, is that it? The, the blues are And you scar your surface. Oh. So that's another reason, you know, yeah, how some people do. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Yeah. But, but I like Rembrandt's. And then I really, for finishing touches, I wish I'd gotten far enough for a finishing touch. But these real buttery, it says, Schminky, and it says Kunstler. Schminker, yeah, the east side and French. 
Oh, yeah, you pronounce it. What is yeah, that? I figured you would be a, Can you pronounce that word that starts with K? Kunstler. Kunstler. Kunstler, yeah. We do that. Artist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Schminke, actually, now that is the name only. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Schminke is when you paint yourself. I mean, that's makeup? Makeup. makeup. Really? Yeah, yeah but in this <laughs> case, it is a name. Artist makeup. I'm sure. Okay. Anyway, I'm trying to look for a place where if you wanted. See, I'm not ready for this stage yet. But see how much brighter it is. Now. I don't know if you change your mind. If you were doing a, a human face right now, would you be using exactly this technique? I don't like to do human faces oh. with pastel. I have done it. I have done it. But I'm going home. This is what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is it that you don't like? The Beretta store. Yeah, Beretta, possibly the presence of Beretta being here. <laughs> and she does uh, human faces beautifully in pastel. What am I looking for? You've got here? some of that one right there. The small book. Oh. Yeah, yeah that, I, that's the picture. I didn't use the brush method doing that. This woman wanted her two poodles done with her. Mm, two <laughs> <laughs> and it was very important that I catch the difference in the two personalities, the two poodles. <laughs> 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 and, and, and she was funny. She said, you got their personalities. <laughs> oh, they go. oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> Were these the draft books with her draft courses, Claire and Martha? No, those were at Santa Anita, pulling the starting gate. We had a couple of um, logging horses up here for years. Really? Oh, that was at Clydesdales. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're, you had Clydesdales? They were little Morgans. Why do you want to know? <laughs> last time you did remember you used to there was a special event at the college oh yeah and you were I do that every you every do it year. every year every year so that's a Rick demo. Bennett and I that's our mutual blackmail he can't turn me down for a demo and I don't turn him down for a demo for that thing oh. so describe what you're talking about yes uh, once a year they have a giant fundraiser for scholarships for the uh, college. Mm -hmm. And it takes place in the autumn and it's a very gala affair. And uh, they have uh, asked artists from the area to set up uh, demos. So Linda Uban is usually there with her ceramic. She sets up the whole works. And I, I let them choose a victim usually. It was Sweet O'Bill once. And they proceeded to get the poor man drunk, so I had <laughs> and send pretty girls to sit in his lap. Uh, uh, anyway, so I do a different person every every year, and I, I demo it, and then they raffle it off, and uh, so they know it's for a worthy cause. So I have the fun of getting a, a thousand or so or two for my portraits that night. Wow, Greta, it is the fall right now. So yeah. When is this oh, you'll have to ask Rick Bennett. He hasn't asked me. Maybe they won't this year. Oh, that's me. Is this it? Yeah, right. 
I think, even though this isn't quite finished, that I want to let everybody yes. go. What, what about the background? What are you doing with the background? I can leave it like this, maybe with a little shadow, or I can work uh -huh. in an abstract background. Why don't we just promise to be really quiet for 10 minutes and let you just yeah. work like a son of a gun? Well, <laughs> oh, the, the tape I'll is work. still running. It's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll work. But yeah, I can, I'm, I'm one Okay, you've already, it's already mm, challenged. But we have two sets of hands. Would the other set of hands work? There, there's another set of hands there. See if they'll work. And uh, do you want me to stop by? I can. Okay. Our cell phone's great for the world's a telephone booth. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's interested in stained glass, there are going to be 10 windows set up at Roger Hogan's stained glass studio, all ready to go off to Las Vegas. Mm. So they're, they're just setting them up now on the windows. We've been working on them for mm. many months. Mm. Mm. Yeah, they are ten. One thing about this net board surface, the sway is so much like the the muzzle of a horse or how the dog or a kitty, you know, it's suitable for the animal portraits. Mm -hmm. It's not for a grand painting with 17 things going on <laughs> and lots of, but as far as you feel, you know, you can feel kind of close to an animal, especially a pet. Bonnie, could you put that little picture on the surface so that your hand isn't hiding the I never look at the camera, I'm sorry. <laughs> You've been looking at my hand up. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, I'm sorry. But well, they got to see the picture long enough now. I used to use a cart paper. I tried it. You didn't like it? No. I know it's not waterproof, I know that. Yeah, you mustn't drool on it. It's it's all if you wash your hands a lot, you should have tried it. Right. So what do you use mostly now? The cart. Yeah. What is it about it that you like? The texture. It goes fast. Yeah. So I can't do anything with cancel. So I can see the paper and it bothers me. Yeah. Yeah. I think and some people that's part of the, the I know. Case. It's just that it's just the difference in, in people. I am having 
value problems. So, Sandpaper, I have a tough time with. Just what kind? Sandpaper. I don't like it. Yeah, I, I tried it. But, so we all have to find what suits us. Is it because of the texture? I think so. Yeah. And you tried different all the way up to like 120 or fine. And just, well, just especially made for how do you burnish that when you've got so many colors without smearing it? Well, is there a technique to use? For instance, you can lay this paper down on it and do it. Very good. Thank you for <laughs> reminding me. It's been a while. Even if you feel like you've done it all in one sitting, it's good to come back the next day and see what, what, you know, what wasn't quite what you wanted. To get away from it. Then. Yeah. <laughs> so you can have a fresh eye. Now, if you stand up to do all your work, how long can you generally stand up? Like two hours or five hours? One hour two? is yeah. play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lazy. <coughs> I'm smart. So we're really pushing you then. Yeah. <laughs> Normally I would have run out and um, thrown clothes in the dryer or put dishes away or, you know, break it up with house Don't forget going to the potty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just stay away from the computer, right? Right. <laughs> that, that tends to waste a lot of time. Yes, it does. This is ridiculous, trying to do this detail with this brush. But um, I'm trying to hurry it on. I probably would sharpen a stick and really get down and work on it. Your pencils wouldn't work at that stage for a real fine detail? I don't think so. Why oh, I, I don't mean to interrupt. Oh, I for some real fine detail. That's why I bought them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're probably just getting into the container. This eyelid is one of these cats. Whose eyelids are Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you. Thank you for showing me something I didn't know. I think what happens is it'll adhere to pastel that's on the paper rather than the paper right, itself. Right. Whatever works. <laughs> I'm going real carefully and slowly at it because. It might work. Wow. Nice. Oh, my hand again. This one. Bonnie, what are you using? It's a um, pencil. pencil. It's, it claims to be soft, and it's softer than I thought. I've had these languishing in my studio for a year without <laughs> <laughs> using well, it. Thank you. What is your name again? Rob. 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 Rob? Like thank you. 
Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. <laughs> Rob just gave me a great uh, challenge there. What brand are they? What do you think? Hmm? What brand are they? They're um, Gioconda. 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 And did you purchase those in the store here, or did you send away? Yeah, I sent away. But either. Um, What's wrong with that? I can't think of the color. What is, no, Seattle. Samuel um, Smith. Right. Okay. Or um, Chief Joe's. Or <coughs> Blick. Blick. Okay. No, those are the three. Blick. Yeah. But I've used Daniel Smith probably. Now, this is a brand. Yeah. yeah. So. That's okay. That's a lot of work. Well, the dark skin. Well, it showed up on the camera. It did? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. What I should have done, see, that's too dark. Values again. So important. Is get more shadow here so when you put the whiskers on, they actually show up. Oh, wow. Yeah. See. But it's done enough for me. Beautiful. <laughs> Can you hold it up for the camera? Sorry. Yeah. Oh. And, uh. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah. Well, it's, it needs a whole lot more uh, pigment on it. But still. But it's a start. Beautiful. And it's really an easy medium. It's forgiving. Yes, it's very forgiving. And for cats, dogs, and horses, me too. Can I ask you one more question? That, like that horse, that model background, is it the, the paper itself on that? Oh, the, the one on the left? No, the uh, this horse here. It has, uh, seems like a lot of pictures. Yeah, the master way actually has a Should I just put a sign up sheet for a workshop for Bonnie? <laughs> if you could ever talk her into it. Yes. Um, what about you? Oh. You know, I'm looking at you. You live in Brookings, don't you? Uh, in the campground, yeah. Could you get down there next Sunday? Like, is, is Sunday, what's happening? Halloween? It's not Halloween. It's not Halloween. Saturday's the luncheon. Saturday's, okay, if you could come back, you'd make a wonderful model, and I could do a pastel portrait. Come on, Rob. Yeah. What? Where? 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 Where?